We call these things uh, surgical transmitters. One was fitted inside you when you went into the Charing Cross Hospital three years ago. A appendix, wasn't it? Transmitter? Are you trying to tell me that you listen to every word I say? A machine does. <laughs> Untouched by human hand. There's a little gadget in these things that ties up with the pulse rate. Puts a bleep onto anything that you're excited about saying. Can you hear your heart beating? It's eating breakfast at twilight. Laughing at leaves on the pavement. Getting a cab to a silly movie to Paris. So the really is one of those things inside me. What do you want? We want people with low power quotients. We want them to work for us. Nothing more sinister than that. All this just to offer me a job, special sort of job. The newspapers talk about the corridors of power, the, the power elite. Let's just say we'd like you to join the club. Oh. There's a vacancy in our newsreel department. We'd like you to help plan the news for 1973. News requires imagination. News requires responsibility. We think you're well qualified. Please. We've only roughed out the news for 1973. Nothing's been given the go-ahead yet, but this, uh, this is the kind of thing we have in mind. Today, April 14th, 1973. First historic pictures by Radstar of the combined U.S.-Russian landing on the moon. Shown here are Majors Webb and Mikhailovich taking their first steps into the unknown, firing their retro rockets to land their spacecraft on the dust-covered surface. June the 22nd, 1973. The State Department releases film of the ultimate weapon, codenamed Icarus. September the 5th, 1973. The new phase in global warfare. War by example. At 4.32 our time, China took out the remote Indian border village of Bandor, unprotected by the Icarus network. This is going to happen in 1973, you're going to make this happen? No. We are going to make models much cheaper. Then we photograph the models. Fake newsreels? Yeah, fake newsreels. For the past 10 years, people have been looking at our fake newsreels and listening to our fake commentary. And they accept it for the truth? And you can do it. Stop a hundred people in the street. How many of them have actually seen a missile or a satellite? That they're, they're, they're just told they exist and they believe it. Yes, you're getting there. I knew you would. Yes. You can do it. This could be the news for 1973. Not necessarily uh, exactly like this. We only plan in detail one year ahead. We are very serious about you. There are things about you we like very much. Qualities you have to offer. Scare an ostrich, buries its head in the sand. You scare a hedgehog, it rolls itself up into a ball. When a woman's frightened, she goes out and buys herself a hat. You mean you scare us so that we'll buy more, so that so that money moves quicker, production moves up? We don't say scare when we talk about human beings. We say uh, threaten them emotionally. And there are all sorts of ways, of do not just the big ones, like the hydrogen bomb. Overcrowd them a little with bad planning. Sell them too many motor cars, anything to keep them a little bit removed from reality. Nowadays, people don't work for money. They work for the idea of money. They don't even love for love. They love for the idea of love. They only hate for the idea of hate. It took us five years to find a non-addictive drug, one we could pay off against the hard drugs, LSD. You marketed that? Oh, yes, of course, and for a very good reason. 
Some of these protest movements were getting a little bit too close to the mark. LSD gave them nice little hallucinations. Made them talk like three-year-olds. <laughs> Throw flowers at policemen. Now we talk terms. You're not still going to ask me to work for you. I'm afraid I've had to put all this rather bluntly. You see, there wasn't really very much time. Uh, it must be rather a shock. Uh, well, I mean, most people realize that the world is controlled from about six big cities. But it must be rather shocking to learn that a sixth of the world is controlled from this building. You mean you? Oh, no. I only rate an office on the seventh floor. There are two other offices above this one. And a giant computer system. Link number four in world control. A computer? Well, what's so remarkable about that? It's just a machine that can store a vast amount of information. A machine that knows too bloody much. Now you're being hysterical about it. The computer's very simple. You feed data into it. Anything from the Wall Street closing crisis to the North Atlantic weather. Report. And you and get decisions. <laughs> that machine's taken you over. It's just a machine. Extra hands for the people who know how to control it. Well, th this one uh, above us, it's... Um... It, it, it's square, in a, in a box. Yeah, I suppose you could call it square in a sort of a box. Do you know why I go away at weekends? To get away from people in boxes. They live in boxes. They get their thoughts, their problems and their answers out of boxes. And I like to get away at weekends because they're not people anymore. Now, you know all about me. My cottage in Hampshire. But did you know that there's a line of trees that goes right up past the house and the noise they make is, is like the sea. Did you know that I find it difficult to sleep in the country? And I like to go and stand in the garden before dawn. And I feel good because I know that my wife and my children are asleep inside. And I like to go out and walk past the wet hedgerows until I can see pasture land and, and the smoke from the cottages in this the village. This may be all very well for one of your grassroots programs, but I'm afraid time is running out. I ought to tell you, we pay a great deal of money we can afford to. We save such a lot on things like the national defence budget and so on. We would start you off at a quarter of a million pounds a year. Oh. Rising to a million when you make the Ministry of Morality, which I know you will. Will you let me out of here? One little point. I should have told you about these uh, surgical transmitters. There's enough of this stuff inside you at this moment to kill six people. There's a button we can press. I'm sorry about the dramatics. <laughs> Our boys call these things the oral contraceptive. Keeps them from talking too much. So there must be one of those transmitters inside you. Who presses the button? Extra hands. All this stuff about the computer being extra hands for the men and how to control it. That machine controls you. You start on Monday. <laughs>